guess what I got for us today? Right over here, we have got claimed to be Audi R8 coils. So we're gonna be testing it out, we're gonna be installing it in this video. And we are not just gonna actually uh, be installing it and just be like, this is what we have. We're also gonna data log it to make sure that the Audi R8 coils are, is like not faulty at all. It's gonna make sure we have got no misfires because the coils I have got in currently, I've already data logged it. The misfires is zero. Literally, we don't have anything we went out for cruising we went under a high load the coils we have now is 100 percent conditions so i'll be showing you guys how to do that as well it's just going to be like a proper confirmation that these coils are number one so why am i upgrading this i have got no absolutely idea i just like the color of them they are red and i think we are gonna go with the unboxing now and i'm gonna show you guys how to change them as well so let's get started yeah Let's go over to the A4. So we are going to remove this cover. You can actually just pop it up. I think it's tightened down at three places. We're just going to move this one out of the way for now. Place it here on top of the boxes. Good stuff. <laughs> so here is our coil. So these are the standard coils they came uh, with the car. So to actually take it out is very easy. We got like one bolt over here. If I'm not mistaken, it's a T30. We've got these clips here at the back that you can actually uh, just click them backwards. Uh, this clip over here did break. They do intend to break, so just be very careful. I've got one down, but three still fine. So yeah, then we're going to go move everything backwards and we're going to lift them straight out. Let's grab the T30. Oh, that one is really good in there. <laughs> okay, so let's quickly have a look. It fits and there we go. It's pretty tight, which is normal, which we hope for. Okay, we're going to quickly remove the screw the entire way. Place it somewhere where we're not going to lose it. Remember, it's over there. Okay, so these clips, you just press it here at the back. I heard a small clip. I think I'm going to actually need two hands for these. Uh, there we go. Let me put the camera down. Before we go any further, I want to show you guys my friend. Say hello to Streetwise 2. <laughs> Alright, so let's get back to it. So, this bolt over here that actually broke off is very difficult to get it out. So, I'm just going to see if I can kind of wedge it a little bit backwards. No, I'm not actually going to have to see to lift the clip up on the inside because it's actually clipped in. So to show you guys what I did to actually get it loose was I took one of these small flats just to be able to get into this small groove over here. So I just press it in and gently lift it up. I don't know if you guys can see. It's actually lifting up a little bit. So anyway, you're just going to lift it up. It's going to unclick and you can move it back. So this entire rail has to go back as one piece to so make sure all four of them is loose. And when you move it back, it is going to hit the VVTi solenoids over here, which is okay. You, get, you are going to need to have two hands to actually hold it back with the one hand and then actually lift up with the other hand. These coils actually come out very easy. I just believe in a small little twist and turn and then it will come straight up. So now that all of them is out, I just like to give a small little bit of a visual inspection just to make sure we don't have any liquids down there or any physical damage. So I placed the coils that I just removed over here. There is the new coils. They look very similar. I do notice that it looks like these, they are standing out uh, while well, a little bit higher, but when you do put them next to each other, it just looks like it's a seating that might be a little bit different, that it might be a bit bigger. But anyway, what I also did notice was, and I did actually ask a few people why it is like this. This is the order I removed it in. One, two, three, four. As you guys might have noticed that these two has got like a dark sleeve. Apparently it has to do with heat. For example, piston two and three, on both sides, they've got a piston to keep the cylinder or the coil warm or 
cool in that case, but whereas with piston number four and one, they only have inwards pistons running inside of it and nothing at the back. So that is why these two are different. So maybe if you guys know anything about it, do let me know in the comments, but let's go and install these babies over here. The installation is a complete reverse on what we just did. We're gonna go and slide them down in, we're gonna push the rail out of the way, press it down and then clip all of them back in together at once. And then we're gonna go tighten the bolt over here and start the car up. So let's quickly just fast forward it for you guys. There we go, that was really, really simple. So all four of them is changed. Let's go and start the car up. I just wanna get the keys. Where did I put the keys? Oh, it's in my pocket. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna leave the camera right over here. The installation is completed, we're situated in the car now, we're actually gonna go and do our run now. So I've actually got a much more in-depth review of how to diagnose your misfires on VCDS. We're technically gonna data log it, so in one of the two corners, I'm not sure which one it is, I'm gonna drop you guys a card, you guys can just go and check it out, how to do a proper misfire test. So let me show you guys what I have selected over here. At the top we have got engine speed. Engine speed is the, rotation, the rotational speed of the engine engine which means it's RPMs and then we've got misfire sum counter so this misfire sum counter is going to tell the entire uh, miscounters uh, the sorry the misfires for the entire run or the duration that we are data logging in and then we have got a um, what do you call it a misfire per thousand revolutions for each individual cylinder so as as you guys might see now everything is on NA because my car's ignition is actually off we're going to quickly start it up, so now it's going to show us all the measurement values and etc. There we go, all of them are showing now, so what we're going to do is we are going to click on log, because obviously we want to log this run. I'm just going to choose uh, the desktop is where we're going to save it as, and we are just going to call it R8 Coil Misfire Run. There we go, going to say save. Okay, so if you guys have never done one of these tests, as I mentioned in other videos, there's a lot of safety precautions you gotta take. For example, your laptop should always be on the seat next to you. We're gonna do a third gear pull on the road in a safe area where there's no traffic. So the reason why we're doing third gear is because we don't reach that great amount of speeds. So obviously with fourth gear, we can do 200 on a car. That's just too excessive on the roads. I don't want to get locked up or anything like that. So we're just gonna do a third gear pull. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click start over here but before you press start you first gotta go into your first second third gear you're gonna keep your rpms low you're gonna hit start and you're gonna put your foot to the floor so on manual cars is very easy because it won't shift please don't press your car to the red line and break it uh, whereas with an automatic car like the dsg like mine when i put my foot to the floor it's actually got like two lumps i'm just gonna press my foot to the first lump if you press it to the second lump it might actually gear back if it does gear back it's no problem you can just quickly gear up a bit your graph might be looking a little bit differently but that's no major t uh, train crash. So let's quickly go to the road. Okay, we are gonna pull up in the road now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure we are in third gear. I'm gonna hit my start, foot to the floor. There she kicks in. There we go, as simple as that, a small third gear pull. So let's head back home and go check out the data log. 
I'm currently back. I've already uploaded my log just to save some time. And I must tell you guys that the log looks amazing. So to actually data log misfires, you got to do it in two separate ways. Okay. So you got one where you actually push your car and see if it has any misfires. You're going to push it till the red line or where it shifts automatically. And then you can actually see if you've got any misfires over there. The second way to see a misfire, it can literally be any time. It can be when you're pulling away from a stop street or you're doing a reverse or anything like that so what I did was I technically did all of them uh, as you guys can see on the graph I did my pull it shifted at about 6,000 rpms we can call it 5859 I think I even shifted a bit earlier there but anyway so the rpms came back down because I let off the throttle and then I actually just cruised I literally cruised I stopped I think this could be it no year where I made a U-turn, I reversed or something and I came back and I drove home smoothly. So also let the car idle a little bit just to see if there is any misfires. And let me show you guys quickly. Cylinder number one, zero. Cylinder number two, zero, three, zero, four, zero. Total zero. I am so happy everyone. It shows you that these coil packs that I have installed has got no problems. It didn't create any new problems. It's a higher spark uh, coil as well which means I think it probably can send more voltage through or something like that. In general I'm very happy with the outcomes. Now to give you guys a small review, I'm not going to say that I felt 10 horsepower gain or anything. No, I didn't feel anything like that. What I did feel was when I actually did accelerate was it felt to me like on the top end when my RPMs are really, really climbing that it felt smoother for some weird reason. You know, like as you might think about it as soon as you step on the throttle, the accelerator, uh, as your car's working harder, oh, faster, it will shake more and stuff. It felt smoother. I, I, I don't know, maybe about the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The retardation of the, ign the ignition. Maybe that has been altered. I'm not sure. Maybe I should actually have a look about that. It's actually a very good thing because maybe I've got less retardation now because of the higher uh, spark coil pack, which is kind of a pretty cool thing. So I don't think I'm going to do it in this video. <laughs> As I was getting to the end of the video, I was thinking to myself, let me rather just do an ignition retardation test as well. Just see maybe if the coil pack does help or not. Today is very, very hot. The first time I did one of these tests, it was much colder. It was summer in winter, so it looked much better. And as soon as I did my ignition retardation test, it was terrible i mean it was one of the worst things i was actually shocked with how bad it was at so let me give you guys an example quickly and let me just tell you what ignition retardation is so technically your car is firing at a certain degree angle so if your car notice any knock because of multiple reasons such as heat or bad fuel or bad ignition uh by its spark plug or whatsoever it will actually delay it so what you're going to see here is the car actually pulling timing out to avoid knock, catastrophic failure and so forth. So obviously you don't want to see any knock, your knock should be zero and you don't really want to see anything above five degrees knock, then you know you're on the bad side of the knock. So right over here on the computer that I'm going to show you guys now on is the knock, the well sorry, the retardation test I did first, the first time I've ever done it and if we go and have a look over here, I'm just going to quickly click on all of them. I want you guys to notice a few things, right? So this is where the car shifts. So this is the entire uh, pool in third gear. Here is where we shift. And as you guys can see, it kind of rectified it right after the shift. So this slight gray stripe over here, you guys see going downwards. This is the time interval the shift took. So technically when we did actually got into the gear, the ignition timing was back to zero. I need this um, this cylinder number four year was a little bit delayed, but it doesn't really matter. But yeah, everything is between, I can't even get there now, is if this is four, seven, this is five, two, we can call it about, uh, 5,000. That is, this is when the ignition retardation started. The worst we saw was six. So all the rest was three. That was the only one that was at six and it was on the shift. So I'm not sure that it was maybe the shift that triggered it to be a six because it was on, maybe it was on cylinder one or what cylinder is this? So yeah, cylinder number one at that moment, but who knows? So then I went and I did my test now with the new coil packs in, the red ones. Once again, today was much hotter. So we're going to quickly go over here. One, two. Oh my gosh, this looks so bad. 
So as you guys can see already, at 3000 RPMs, we are having ignition retardation. So previously it was five. This is 2000 degrees earlier we're having it. And also, as you guys can see here, where we hit our gear, um, here you guys, okay, just even look at it, where we got into our gear, uh, this is where two of the cylinders actually met up over here, and here at the back at even further. So it took a long time for the ignition retardation to rectify itself. And as you can see here, we had a minus 7.5, and the rest is minus 5.3. This is horrible. Like, you shouldn't go above five. Obviously, your car's not gonna break or whatever, but for performance wise, you gotta try to keep not going above five. You understand? Two, three is okay, but five is like that. No, not anymore. You understand? So here we had a minus seven. I was like, no way. Did these new quill packs destroy my freaking, um, my ignition retardation? Like, is it worse now after I installed it? You understand? So I went and reinstalled the old ones and immediately went back to the road. And this is the results that I got. So as you guys will see here, I actually did two pulls. I did a small pull till about three, let's call it 4,000. I let off and I did a pull till it shifts, it shifted at about five, six. Okay, that's probably me that shifted or whatever the case is. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag it like this. We can only view this part. And we're going to quickly select on it as well. One, two, three, and four. So here with the old ones, um, yeah, with the old ones, it's a bit later. It's about three, two. But also, you guys need to know that the time period I did this was quite distance in between. And also, the car got time to cool down all those things a little bit. But as we go through, we can actually see the worst is 8.31. This is even worse than the new coil packs. So it shows that the new coil packs actually helped with ignition retardation. The ignition retardation is horrible, horrible, horrible. This is not good. This is not what you guys want to see. And all of them are minus four, minus four, 7.5. And yeah, they do fluctuate like that. So in other words, I would, I would not say that installing new coil packs is going to fix your ignition retardation, but it looks pretty solid. Like, like I can show information here. Like we never reach a minus 8.3. The lowest we had, the highest we had or the lowest was minus 7.5 of the new coil ignition pack. So in, in other words, I think installing the new coil pack will be better. I reinstalled it. We got the normal coil pack back in now, but this is why data logging is so important. You might have actually thought that I stole the new coil pack and oh my gosh, it feels better and but is it really better? You understand? We did our misfire test. It is zero. Sorry guys, I see a keys on getting darker and lighter. Excuse me for that. The lighting over here is very bad. So anyway, like, yeah, I know I've got no misfires. I know the ignition retardation is better with the new coil packs in. So in general, I can say that this coil pack did actually help it it's been better with the better than the old ones with the ignition retardation test so this is why our data log is so that i can bring better conclusions to the videos and can actually see what's going on so yeah once again i will drop the misfire and the timing retardation test for you guys in the description so you guys can just go and have a look at it if you guys want to find out more about these things i'm talking about but otherwise otherwise thank you so much for watching everyone i really do appreciate it if you want to support the channel make sure to hit one of these logos here i'm not sure which side it is i think it's merged so it's going to be this side <laughs> otherwise thank you so much for watching make sure to drop a big like and i'll see all of you guys in my next video but for now peace out